So with that, we're going to get started. The first presenter, which happens to be me, it just makes it easier when you're trying to uh, toggle between individuals. So this topic of why does my substrate pH drop when I use a basic fertilizer came out because a lot of growers, especially in the southeast, uh, are utilizing basic fertilizers because we don't have much alkalinity in the water, but they still at some point have seen the pH even drop, even with the use of a basic fertilizer. And that's what we're exploring here uh, with this presentation. So the two main areas we're going to talk about are the factors influencing pH and the factors that influence pH drift of those plants. So here is a graphic that shows some of the main factors that you're looking at with the ones that like substrate components. You know, if you're looking at uh, uh, making the pH drift higher, core does that, whereas peat and bark, which are very acidic, would make the pH go down. The same thing goes with limestone in the, the substrate. If you have too much lime, the pH will go up. The pH will go down with too little. So that that's uh, pretty obvious. Uh, alkalinity, if you start getting above 200 parts per billion bicarbonate, you will see that pH creeping up over time. That's especially the case in the Midwest and the Great Plains. But if you have little or none in the way of alkalinity, then you're susceptible to pH drop. And then, of course, there's the basic fertilizers that will help increase pH, and the acidic fertilizers will make it go down. And there is some uh, species effect that will happen for either way of it going up and down. So in this presentation, we're really going to focus on that fertilizer type. And so when you look at the species effect on pH, and that's, that's some of the factors to look at, what the plant does during production is not always good. In some cases, it will increase the pH. In other cases, it will decrease the pH. And you can see the increase being the blue dots going up to the uh, right and the red is the pH going down. In some cases, the plants are doing things that's going against what it ob obviously wants. For instance, Vinca would like to have a lower pH, while Celosia and Dianthus would like to have a higher pH. So the plants are, in many cases, working against you. The other thing that you consider is looking at pH drift is the type of water that you have and the type of lime charge. So in both cases, if you're using a lime charge, for the most part, it will stabilize that substrate based on that black line. Whereas if you're using alkaline water, water with alkalinity, over time, you will see if you have an excess amount that that pH of that substrate is going to go up. So it will change and you'll get drift going on. There's also the effect of uptake of fertilizers. For the most part, when a plant takes up a, an ammoniacal type fertilizer, you're seeing a pH drift down. Whereas with a nitrate type fertilizer, you see the pH drift up. The reason for that is that here we have the brown root with the root tip there to the, to the left, that when a plant is taking up fertilizer, it wants to remain balanced or neutral. So if it takes up a nitrate type of a fertilizer, a basic fertilizer, that means it's going to give off also a negative. So that gives off a, a, an OH minus. Well, that then uh, joins up with um, water or with a hydrogen, which takes the acidity out of the soil, making water. So that's why the pH tends to go up. And so you have that pH rise going on. With an acidic fertilizer, the same thing occurs with the root. It wants to remain balanced. If an ammoniacal type nitrogen is used, it's going to get and taken up by the root. You're going to have a hydroxide given off to, to help counterbalance that. And so you're going to have an, the, the positive being uptaken and the pH is going to fall over time. So this is all well and good. And this works when the fertilizer supplied equals the fertilizer demanded by the plants. When you're in balance, then you have this effect of plant uptake being the overriding system that affects that substrate uh, with the fertilizer. So we do see in some cases with the basic fertilizer, though, that 
the pH still goes acidic. And Dr. Paul Nelson uh, and his grad students did some looking at this. Uh, they haven't yet published the information. I think it's going to come out in the next year. Uh, but they were looking at the fertilizer effect of acidity and basicity. And so this is, this is basically a summation of some of that research that Paul Nelson did here at NC State University. To illustrate this basically in summation is that in the case here, and we're looking at roughly 100 parts per million uh, fertilizer being supplied by the plant, and that is roughly on a lot of times the, the amount supplied equals the amount demanded by the plant. So when we have that condition, what happens to the EC? The EC, no matter if it's basic, the blue line, neutral, the green line, or acidic, the red line, the PA or the EC pretty well is going to stay about the same because you're in balance. So then what we see when you're looking at pH with a basic fertilizer as that plant takes up that uh, 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 nitrate type fertilizer, you're gonna see a gradual increase in that pH of that substrate. With a neutral fertilizer, it's basically gonna stay the same. And with acidic fertilizer, it's going to drop. So again, 100 part per million, or in the case where supply equals demand. Now let's then shift to doubling the fertilizer to 200 parts per million, where the supply is actually greater than the demand uh, of the plant. So you have too much that is actually there. And so uh, what happens in that case? Well, what do you expect on the EC? If it, you have too much supplied, what's gonna happen? In the case of all three fertilizer types, basic, neutral, and acidic, you're gonna see over time that EC increase. And so that's when you know that you're supplying too much fertilizer more than what the plant needs. So then the interesting thing that they found in this research is that in the case of all three fertilizers being at basic, again, the blue line, neutral or acidic, that the pH over time then dropped. And so why is that the case? You would think that a basic fertilizer would cause the pH to go up and they did not find that in the, the numerous trials that they were doing. And so if the pH goes too low, what do you see? You can see the standard bronzing going on as we see here with marigolds. So as it gets more severe uh, going to the right, you can see more of a necrosis going on after it bronzes. Likewise, on some other plants, you'll see more of that purplish black discoloration happening on the lower leaves. In both cases, we're looking at symptoms developing on those lower leaves. And so thinking about this, when you start looking at fertilizers and the chemical effect of that fertilizer, if you mix up some fertilizers that were 200 parts per million, an acidic fertilizer and a basic, the acidic being the blue one, what would be the case of the P solution pH? We measured some, the pH was about 3.8 in that concentrate. But what do you think that pH would be under the basic conditions? In that case there, the, the pH of a basic fertilizer, in this case, 13 to 13 Cal Mag, was actually more acidic than a 2010 -20. But a 2010 -20 with when you look at the potential acidity, is about 400 pounds of potential acidity, whereas 13 to 13 is probably a, right around 400 pounds of basicity. So it's kind of odd that that's the case that's going on, but you have that acidic effect uh, with that actual fertilizer solution. So what's going on when you, you have a balance between supply and, and demand, that then the uptake effect of what that plant, that illustration with the roots, is greater than the chemical effect. So you, in fact, will see in the lower part of this slide, you will see that a basic fertilizer will increase the pH. A neutral fertilizer will hold it, and an acidic fertilizer will force it down. But when you turn on and supply more fertilizer than what's demanded, then it, the inverse happens. The uptake is not as great of an influence on that substrate pH. It's overwhelmed by that extra fertilizer, the chemical effect. And in all cases, we will see that the soil pH will then decrease. So that's what's happening. It's a greater chemical effect is driving down that pH if you have the, uh, the EC2 high. So 
the, the take home here is that you really need to match the EC level with the plant's requirements. And that's where monitoring for both pH and EC is important to make sure you are on target. So you don't start driving down that pH for those plants. So in conclusion, we, we've talked about some various factors that influence pH drift, but if we look at the EC being too high, the pH can drop. So again, the best method that you have to do is to go through and monitor pH and EC on a regular basis to make sure you're in balance, so you're not getting uh, giving the plant too much nutrition. Now, if a, a problem does occur, this past spring, we had the eGrow Alert 4.02, and in that alert has the, the, the fixes, both if the pH is going too high and if the pH is going too low. So you can download that, that handout from the eGrow website if you want additional information. So, stop the presentation and give a thanks though to Rockwell Farms that they uh, were a supporter of the research when we were doing uh, some of the pH termination that, that uh, went on in Dr. Nelson's lab.